So, I had some time on my hands and I decided to make my own engine. The engine being an 80 degree V-twin displacing 140cc. The engine is going to mostly use stock Lifen components for the gearbox, cylinders, heads, con rods, clutch, and essentially everything except the crankcases and the crank pin. The lower cylinder and head will need the cam chain tunnels widened by 14mm as the bore centre line and the cam chain are now 14mm further apart due to having one extra conrod on the crankshaft. The next step was to turn this 3D model into reality. So the first step was to figure out how I was going to manufacture the two crankcase halves. After hours of research and getting numerous quotes, I had decided on lost foam casting this crankcase half as $250 to $300 per attempt was just not a risk I was willing to take. So the next thing to do was take a trip down to the local hardware store and get some extruded polystyrene foam. From there I made a duplicate of the right hand side crankcase model in Fusion 360 and scaled it up by 2% to account for the shrinkage of the aluminium during the casting process. I also added material around all of the critical points that would be machined after the casting process had taken place. The next thing I had to do was work out how big the model was and if I could machine the entire piece of foam in two operations, one for each side. After further examination, I decided I would have to carry this out in four operations, as my DIY CNC milling machine just didn't quite have the Y-axis travel required to carry this out in two ops. I decided the best way to hold the piece of foam was using two dowels. I would also use the left hand dowel to take my zero, so in between all four operations the machine would not need to be re-zeroed and the foam could be relocated accurately. The dowels also locate the foam from moving side to side during the milling operations. I also have finger clamps only hand tight to stop the foam lifting during these milling operations. One of the key benefits of machining foam and then casting as opposed to machining billet is I can be a lot more aggressive when cutting the foam with the width of cut and depth of cut. I am using conventional as opposed to climb milling for this as it leaves a much better surface finish on the foam. All up this process takes about an hour and a half including the setup. As you can see the shop vac's going hard keeping all the mess contained as it comes off the cutter. I'll leave you to enjoy the machining and then explain what's going to happen next closer to the end of the video. Here is the final contour, cutting the outside shape of the pattern. Once the final operation is finished, I remove the material from the milling machine and take it over to my workbench to cut away the tiny sliver of material, connecting the pattern to the rest of the stock.
All that's left to do is take a coarse piece of sandpaper to the outside of the pattern to smooth off where the tabs were and get rid of all the fluffiness at the bottom of the contour. All that's left to do prior to casting is to coat the pattern in a thin layer of plaster and add the sprue. I will show you how this is done in the next video. If you like the video and want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe.